What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Fibble Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you are all keeping well or at least as well as you can be considering the circumstances. Yes, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video, which is something a little bit different and very current and something that we know is concrete in terms of information and not really any speculative content from me. Chelsea Football Club and Frank Lampard are indeed in a unique position at the moment in terms of football in the Premier League and not in a good way how often I talk about Chelsea or how sometimes I can talk about how Chelsea are in a positive unique situation. This is a negative one. It's regarding the season ending. I'm going to give you the reasons why Chelsea are in a bit of a tight spot and explain the options. It's interesting and it's important. So strap yourselves in. I'm going to take you on a journey of concern. <laughs> But hold on a second, do you remember I played FIFA all the time on my second channel, Yan's Yard? And then I basically had to stop because it's so much work in terms of recording the episode for an hour, you know, editing it and uploading it. It's just a really long process. Well, people wanted me to bring it back. I'm going to bring it back and it's better because I'm going to live stream it and it's going to be interactive with you guys in terms of helping me become better at FIFA and telling me who to buy maybe on foot champions or what to do or what formations to do or what players to play. You guys help me live. I'm going to be live streaming on Yan's Yard, my sister channel, so make sure you do go and subscribe to Yan's Yard. I'll put a link in the description to the channel. I'm going to start streaming every evening. Make sure you come hang out, talk to me, watch FIFA, and most importantly, subscribe to Yan's Yard, and why not subscribe to this channel too if you haven't done so yet, and if you want to help Yan out, which why wouldn't you, man? Why not like this video? All right, let's get on with it. So, if you haven't noticed, football has stopped. Of course, that's the right thing to do with the health crisis, and I am pleased everything stopped so everything can slowly get back to normal, but the tangible facts of the situation is it's become really obvious that football needs to finish. This season needs to finish. Yes, Liverpool will win the title. Yes, some teams will get relegated. But it needs to finish because of the financial ramifications of if it didn't finish would be too big. There'd be too many lawsuits. The broadcasting companies would be selfish and want money back. Clubs will go to the wall. Loads of bad stuff will happen, so the season does indeed need to finish. Some people are speculating that could be in months time from now, some people are speculating it could be at the end of the summer. Regardless, it will probably be behind closed doors, which will make a bit of a boring spectacle, but again, I understand the reason why, and if that's the way to do it, that's the way to do it. All the Premier League clubs are meeting of digitally or with the Premier League, some sort of big important digital meeting this Friday to discuss what to do moving forwards, right? Now, although apparently no decision will be made on this meeting, it's understood that all the clubs do want to finish the Premier League season, good, but it's also understood that a bunch of clubs are really, really desperate for the season to end by June the 30th. Now, this may be a little bit ambitious. It's almost like start the Premier League again in June after a couple of weeks pre-season behind closed doors and just play so many games in a row, maybe? I don't know. It's going to be really, really congested regardless with a bunch of footballers that aren't fit or up to speed and it might be a little bit of a messy situation. But for some clubs, it's a more desperate situation than others and no one is more concerned than Chelsea Football Club and I'll tell you why. June the 30th, of course, is the cutoff date for player contracts and loan deals. So if it's gone past June the 30th, clubs like Chelsea, not just Chelsea, but clubs like Chelsea, who could be dealing with massively depleted squads in a really turbulent, peculiar part of the season where they're you know, cramming everything in, trying to complete the season and finish where they want to be. Remember, Chelsea is still in a precarious position in fourth place in the Premier League. And I think they're only three points clear. It's no given that they're actually going to secure Champions League football for next season. And with Man United coming just up behind them with Pogba, Bruno Fernandes and a bunch of other returning injured players and good form generally, Chelsea have reason to be concerned. No more reason than the whole of their recently used front three will be out of contract. That's right, Chelsea's positive performances in the last two games of football they played when they knocked out Liverpool in the FA Cup and they beat Everton 4-0 in the Premier League, 6 Chelsea nil Merseyside. 
was using the OAP front three, as I like to call it, Willian, Pedro and Giroud all up in the front three, and they were playing very, very well with the likes of Billy Gilmore in the midfield, uh, Mason Mount was playing a lot better, the balance was right. Of course, Giroud, Willian and Pedro will all be out of contract, will all be released by Chelsea, will all be gone come June the 30th, and that... <laughs> leaves Chelsea in a very difficult position. Granted, I know what you're going to say, Chelsea have the future of Chelsea in those positions. They have Callum Hudson-Odoi, Christian Pulisic and Tammy Abraham who should all be fit and generally they should be seen moving forward as first choice. Granted, but they were not the ones in form, they were not the players playing and they lack the experience of the other three to see Chelsea over the line in a really short period of time. You need that experience, big game experience, to basically just be sensible, show professionalism, maturity, which of course Giroud, Pedro and Willian would have been able to do, and the youngsters of Tammy, Christian and Callum perhaps may not be able to do. And remember, it's really important to say two of the, well, all of them were out injured, all of, all of them were having an injury, so they're coming back from injury, none of them have been playing, so they've got no form, and they'll have like less match fitness, of course, there's just loads of reasons to con be concerned for Chelsea Football Club in terms of their front three playing. So equally is the fact how they were all injured and not fit, not match fit, not sharp, just generally not playing, and equally how Giroud, Willian and Pedro of course did have all those things but they were playing well, they looked good, Chelsea looked really good the last two games and it had a lot to do with all three of them. Pedro suddenly finding form out of nowhere for the first time in the season, Willian's industry helping and of course Giroud getting back in the team and showing how he can be that catalyst target man that superpowers the team and offers balance and affords Chelsea the opportunity to play well. So what's going to happen? Are Chelsea going to try and do these month rolling contracts for the players? Is even that possible? Will they try and negotiate with other clubs? Will it like damage their ability to get the transfers they want in case they get injured in these additional months? There's loads of polit politics and stuff to consider moving forward here. Maybe the Chelsea youngsters could see Chelsea over the line, but the truth is clubs like Chelsea are questioning the Premier League saying, look, if you're going to end it past this date or even around this date, you're suddenly questioning the integrity of the Premier League campaign if Chelsea and other clubs like Chelsea have to use depleted squads to complete the campaign. Let's be real, it's going to be a really peculiar conclusion to the season regardless because it is going to probably be behind closed doors, probably be on like training pitches somewhere in the festival of football training camp idea that's been floating around the terms of like a spectacle because it will be televised a spectacle to watch will be very quiet it'll be very strange indeed and the players won't be match fit probably even if they get like i don't know 10 days two weeks pre-season won't be enough and yeah if chelsea have a massively depleted squad if you know maybe Michy Batshuayi has to come in, who hasn't been good all season, really. It just leaves Chelsea in a really weak position. Remember the feeling all the Chelsea fans had over the last two games? They were like, yeah, we're fine. We're going to win the FA Cup. We're definitely going to get top four. Suddenly that front three is gone. Suddenly Chelsea are dealing with a depleted squad. Suddenly they're relying on players returning from injury with no match fitness or no match sharpness. It's just a very peculiar, difficult and worrying and concerning situation, especially if you think of the likes of Hakim Ziyech. He might have to be, you know, completing the season for Ajax in Holland. He won't be able to come over and help Chelsea. It's going to be difficult. You know me though, I'm not all doom and gloom. I just wanted to highlight this situation. Obviously, the Premier League teams, the Premier League, they're all meeting to discuss this very situation. I'm, I'm certain Chelsea will will echo the sentiments I've just spoken about or the concerns to the Premier League. Perhaps a rule will be put into place for players to sign small extensions. Who knows, maybe Giroud will get his 12-month extension and play on this season and who knows, maybe the same for Pedro, although perhaps that might be problematic for a few different reasons. We'll have to see. Chelsea's hand might be forced in many ways to do things maybe that they didn't want to do, but hey, that's what's going on in the world this, at the moment, so everyone needs to make compromises. But anyway, what do you guys think? I'm keen to get your thoughts and opinions on this situation. What do you think will happen? Do you think Chelsea can rely on a depleted squad and the youngsters up front who aren't really match sharp? It's worrying, right? 
If you like FIFA, make sure you do come subscribe to Yan's Yard and watch me stream FIFA every night. I'm going to start this evening. It's going to be loads of fun and I pretty much need your help. So make sure you come along and say hello. Uh, remember to like this video if you've enjoyed this content today. And of course, like I said, get down in the comment section and express how you feel about everything. What you think is going to happen? Who can carry Chelsea over the line? Is it just the youngsters? Will we, you know, even see someone like Armando Broja sitting on the bench again? Who knows? what's gonna happen you tell me down in the comment section below and if you want to be more interactive with myself on top of this and on top of FIFA streaming on Dian's Yard you are welcome to come and follow me on Instagram where I often do Instagram lives but I'm self-isolating inside my flat I walk around hold Instagram live talk to you guys about Chelsea and football and just whatever really it's quite fun so you're welcome to come follow me on social media and that is at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter, so come say hello. That's it from me, you lot. Enjoy the football that sadly isn't happening at the moment, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.